Oh, all right, what's going on? Welcome to uh, the first uh, Ixalan set review that I'm going to do on uh, YouTube and Twitch. So uh, be sure to follow and subscribe on both those platforms if you get the opportunity. This is going to be in two parts on Twitch. Uh, part one on Twitch is going to cover uh, white, blue, black, and lands. And then part two is going to be uh, red, green uh, artifacts and <clears throat> gold cards. Uh, for you two, I'm just going to post all the, the colors individually. So we'll have a white section, a blue section, a red section, black section, green, etc., etc. Uh, so you guys can be sure to check those out as you like. Uh, not going to do any sort of like ranking system here because that's pretty tedious and uh, it's going to fluctuate wildly based on what happens in standard or limited or whatever. But i uh, going to go through the cards and give you guys my impression on each. And uh, hopefully you guys can have a better idea of what to do this weekend. So, uh, Baffling End, two mana. When it enters the battlefield, exile a creature an opponent controls with a converted mana cost three or less. When Baffling End leaves the battlefield, target opponent creates a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with Trample. This seems terrible, right? I, I don't know why this is uncommon. This is a weird uncommon. Like, okay, so... You're getting rid of a guy, so it's kind of like a journey to nowhere, but it's restricted. When it enters the battlefield, exile a creature and opponent controls with a converted mana cost. So it, it's, a, it's a journey to nowhere that can only target a creature with a casting cost three or less. Um, and then your opponent is actually incentivized to kill it. When, they, when, they, when this leaves the battlefield, they don't get their guy back, but they do get a 3-3. Three, three. So, okay, so uh, if it was a journey to nowhere, they'd get their actual guy back. In this situation, they just get the three three. Um, so in that in that case, it's actually better than Journey to Nowhere because they're only getting a three three instead of whatever they exiled. But on the other hand, it can only get creatures with three or less, and there's really not many creatures you care about. I get. I mean, there are there's there's creatures you care about that cost three or less, but like, I mean, I don't know. It's fine. The card's fine. Uh, it's removal and limited. You're going to take it, but um, I don't know. I don't see this making any waves in Constructed, unfortunately. So, Bishop of Binding. Four mana rare. Vampire Cleric. 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, exile a creature and opponent controls until Bishop of Binding leaves the battlefield. So, the first two cards in the set, uh, exile creatures. So that's interesting. This can exile anything, so it's basically just your your run of the mill uh, fiend slayer paladin, fiend 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 hunter, fiend ban banisher priest, whatever you want to call it, whatever whatever your poison is. And whenever this attacks, a uh, vampire gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the power of the exiled card. That's actually that's a good ability, but it does require you attack with a one one. So unless your opponent has no other creatures, unless you're exiling the final creature they have with Bishop of Binding, and then Bishop survives a turn, and they don't have another creature, then you're probably not going to really utilize that second ability very frequently. And four mana for a 1-1 one, one that does this is pretty fragile. Like, this is why we like them on 1-3s and 2-2s two that cost three mana instead. Um, a little too fragile for a four mana card, but... Uh, it's a unique ability, which is interesting. Blazing Hope. One mana, exile target creature with power greater than or equal to your life total. This... I mean, does this see play in Modern as a an amazing removal card for Death Shadow decks? Maybe. I mean, getting being able to exile a uh, Death Shadow for one mana, it's not bad. Uh, or not, not, not a Death Shadow, but like, you know, playing the deck and being able to exile whatever your opponent is playing because it's undoubtedly going to have more power than your life total. Uh, could be good. But otherwise, this is extremely narrow. And um, the, on the bright side, like if they have a 6-6 six, six, and they're attacking you every single turn, there is going to come a point where you're able to exile the the creature. Or the, yeah, whatever whatever is beating you down. Unless they have a 5-5 five, five and they put you to exactly to 5 and then they can... Oh, it's greater than or equal to. So even in that situation, you'll probably be able to... You'll always be able to kill it. Um, uh, it's it's all right. It's no path to exile, but it's it's a, it's a, another. This I like this design a lot, which is which is not nothing. So, cleansing ray, two mana. Choose one. Destroy a vampire or destroy an enchantment. Uh, I like this card a lot, actually. I don't think it's necessary to um 
destroy the vampire. Like destroying a vampire is is a very very narrow ability, and I think there's only a certain number of formats that are going to benefit from this. Standard might be one of them in the coming uh, in the coming months, thanks to Rivals of Exelon and Exelon itself. But uh, the destroy an enchantment part is pretty relevant on a two mana card, which is just always useful. So depending on how prominent vampires are in this metagame, I could see this being. Uh, pretty useful like the i love cards like this it's two mana it does two different things that's great that's cool that's a cool card uh divine verdict four mana destroy an attacking or blocking creature we've seen this a million times just a solid limited removal card nothing nothing really super exciting everdon champion three mana human soldier prevent all combat damage be dealt to everdon champion it's a two two so there's always, like, one white, white tutus, like Paladin Onvek and Fiendslayer Paladin and all kinds of, like, um, th- three-mana tutu white creatures that do something unique. And this is just the next in a long line of that. It seems like parental combat damage that would be dealt to it. Like, that's pretty good. Uh, it's still very easy to kill with any other removal spell, and it's only a tutu for three. So it's very similar to, like, tutu that's unblockable for three, right? The blue one, like, Phantom... Phantom... The, I don't know. It's, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Phantom Soldier. I don't know. That's. I don't think that's its name. But there's a there's a two two, for three blue guy that's unblockable. And this is basically the same thing. In that like, um, y- you're either it's either going to get through because they're not going to block with their one or two two, or they're going to have something bigger, and it's just, you just run it into that. So, um, meh. I mean, again, like I, I like a lot of these designs. Like, this is a cool design. That's a cool ability. Preventing all damage, combat damage to be dealt to it. Because it just blocks forever. Um, and it can get through if your opponent only has small guys. So, that's cool. A nice twist on the... the uh, You know, the 2-2 the two, two for 3 card that has a unique ability on it. So, Exultant Sky... And I see you guys in chat, just so you know. Uh, Exultant Sky Marcher, 3-mana, 2-3 three three flying. Meh. Seen it before. A lot of times we see the two two flyers for three mana. Um, yeah, but usually they have like haste or something. So I guess two three for three mana flyers. It's actually very good. Um, usually two three ground guys cost three mana. So you're gonna you know flying vampire soldier is relevant creature types. Uh, double white being the the cost consideration for this guy. So famished paladin three three for two mana vampire knight relevant creature types. Doesn't untap during your untap step. Uh, whenever you gain life, untap it. This actually seems great. See, this card, this card is awesome. A 3-3 for 2 is just fantastic. And um, not being able to untap sucks, but like when you can untap it anytime you gain life, and so many vampires have lifelink, this almost makes it vigilant. Like, you can just make a 1-1 vampire with lifelink. You can attack with a 3-3 and the 1-1. You'll gain life even if they block it, they chump block it. Or, you know, if they block uh, if they block their, with their 2-2 with the 1-1. Um, but... Yeah, this seems great. And then it just untaps automatically, so it basically it's like a Vigilant 3-3 three, three for 2. Uh, half of an infinite combo. What's the other... What's the other half of that infinite combo, I wonder? Let's see if anyone wants to say. You guys probably know already. Mark of the Vampire, Pseudo Vigilance. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, you can just put Mark of the Vampire on this, and you 5-5 five, five with lifelink. Forerunner of the Legion. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a vampire card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Oh, I hate cards that put them on top. Uh, whenever another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's fine. I mean, it tutors for one of your rare or mythic vampires, which is cool. Um, it has a cute plus plus one plus one ability they're not counters so it's not super permanent it's not really a lord it's not really doing everything that you really want from a three mana two two but you know the abilities could have uses i could see i mean you're probably always going to play this guy in limited but i don't know if this guy's good enough to make the cut and construct it maybe it is because it gets your sanctum the the three four for four the Hellrider vampire that's cool but like i said it just depends on how many um, how many vampires, how many playable, constructed-worthy vampires there are in standard, so. Imperial Ceratops, 3-5, five, 4-5. Five. 
Dinosaur and Rage. Whenever it is dealt damage, you gain two life. Okay. That's pretty much limited. So. Legion Conquistador. We saw this guy in Ixalan. Apparently they are still searching uh, for um, the Immortal Sun, I guess. The Legion of Dusk sailed from Torazon in search of glory, riches, and the Immortal Sun. Yeah, I guess they're still looking. They'll find it. You'll find it eventually, Legion Conquistador. You... You keep fighting the good fight. Luminous Bonds. Three mana. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. So this is literally just pacifism, except for three mana instead of two. You're going to play it unlimited, but you're never going to play this and construct it over something better, uh, which there is. So, see you later. Bye. Majestic Heliop Heli Heliopterus. Four mana for a 2-2 flyer. Whenever it attacks another target dinosaur you control against flying until... Wait, what? Didn't... Interesting. Okay. There, there was already the 3-3-4 three, three, four, four in Ixalan that gave it another creature plus one, plus one, and flying when it came into play. I think it was the, the, three, the dinosaur. I think it was plus one, plus one. Um, but, I don't know. This seems quite similar, but it also seems actually ridiculous. Like, a 2-2 two, two flyer for four is... Usually you're going to play that every time in Limited anyway. But uh, the fact that this guy also... T gives another dinosaur you control flying until the end of turn. Like, okay, I'll give my 6-6 six, six flying. Cool. Yeah, this card seems busted and limited, which is why it's an uncommon and unplayable and constructed. So, Martyr of Dusk. Two mana for a 2-1. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one white vampire token with lifelink. Okay, we've seen this a thousand times before. It's a doom traveler, except for vampires or, you know, whatever. Whatever your pick your, pick your guy that dies makes a token poison. Moment of Triumph. And, apparently, you know, as far as Martyr of Dusk goes, I could see this uh, finding a home in, in a, like, again, in a vampire deck. Like, it's, is it better than 2-2 Bishop that has lifelink? Maybe, because it's it's two bodies. It's a 2-1, and then you get a 1-1 one, one when it dies. So, possibly. Could be better. Again, it just depends on what the vampire deck is looking for. So, that's why it's, it's hard to evaluate cards like this uh, before, like, when there's a new archetype that could be, that could be present. Uh, when a set is released because you don't actually know until you see all the cards. And I haven't actually taken a look at the entire set yet, so. Moment of Triumph, one white. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and you gain two life. There's a lot of incremental life gain in this set, you can tell. So the 3-3 three, three that untaps when you gain life uh, seems well-suited for this, for, this, uh, for, this, for this set. Otherwise, you're probably not going to play this in Constructed. Like, you just combat tricks like this just never make the cut and construct it. But the two life is not terrible. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. I mean, I don't see this scene playing constructed. But the thing is, stranger things have definitely happened. And I've definitely seen uh, constructed decks put, like, a crazy card like this. You might just want it for the plus two. Like, if there's an aggr aggressive red deck, uh, which there is, I mean, you might just want to be able to pump your vampire, block something, and then gain two life. And it's not terrible. Paladin of Atonement. I don't know if this whole set is vampires. Like, I know that's I know it's a vampire set, but like, they're all vampires. And dinosaurs, I guess. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you lost life last turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Paladin of Atonement. That's not bad, but it's just kind of slow. And I can definitely see, like, if this is good enough for other formats, when it dies, you gain life equals toughness. Sure. Um, I can see putting this in things like uh, decks with Caves of Coilos or Battlefield Forge or something so that you're, you know take a damage the problem is that like you play this on turn two and you can play it off of caves of quillis and then on turn three it's only a two two like you're only going to get one counter per turn which is really kind of slow and i don't know if there's a way in standard right now to consistently like deal yourself damage like a like a pain land Ah, oh, the deserts. The deserts are good calls. Um, yeah, so the like Ifner Deadlands and stuff. Uh, so yeah, you could you could tap your own your own deserts in order to deal yourself damage. It's still a little slow, but it might be worth it, especially because the uh, the vampire deck does have a way a lot of ways to gain their life back. So oh, it's the beginning of each upkeep. That's actually pretty good. See, 
little 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 touches like that are uh, make the difference between a good card and a bad card, actually, or a good card and a mediocre card even. So yeah, if you can if you can tap like an Ifner Deadlands to cast this, and then test, tap like a Sheffet Dunes on your opponent's turn to get another counter during your upkeep, uh, and then making it a, a three three for your first attack into a five five. Um, this card could be very strong, especially when you have multiples of them, and they all trigger from the the life loss of one card. So you can tap to deal yourself one damage from a land, and then all of your guys get plus one, plus one. That's actually very good. So, yeah, you can see how my opinion changed there, knowing that uh, it triggered from one upkeep to each upkeep, which is pretty huge. Pride of Conquerors. Uh, two mana for an instant. Ascend. This is our first Ascend card. If you control ten or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. If you have the City's Blessing, those creatures get plus two, plus two. Instead, this is these cards are a dime a dozen. These are limited, exclusively limited cards. Um, so, does Ascend only trigger when it happens? Like, I play this, Ascend, it checks to see if I have ten permanents. If I do, I get the City's Blessing. If not, I don't. Because that's interesting. I don't know how Ascend works, because there's permanents that have it as well. So... Like when you like if if I have a dinosaur that has ascend like let's say, and I play it, does it only check when I play it, or is it just a static ability on the card where I suddenly get the city's blessing once I hit ten permanents? I don't know how that works. Um, either way, I don't see this card seeing play. Ascend is permanent if you ascend once. Well, I know I know you keep it. I know you keep it. I'm just wondering when it checks. Okay, so on instance it only checks on resolution. Someone is saying so that's that's good to know. I'm going to lower this camera just slightly. This is so much face. Okay. Um, maybe too much. Okay. Um, it checks on resolution, but after that, it's fair. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so again, this card just seems like it's limited only. I'm not going to be playing Pride of Conquerors in my standard deck, and I think there are tons of variations of this card in every limited format. So what are you, you going to do? Sometimes you just don't... Uh, sometimes you don't have much pride. Radiant Destiny. Three mana. For a rare, Ascend, if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, as Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. I will choose Dinosaurs. Creatures you control of the chosen type, Dinosaurs, get plus one, plus one. As long as you have the City's Blessing, they also have Vigilance. Um, I hate to say it, but this is a, just another... Um, This is just your typical run-of-the-mill... Anthem card with a variation, right? Like, until since the dawn of time, there's been three mana Anthem cards that give plus one, plus one, and then maybe have another perk if you fulfill the criteria. So, <laughs> pan camera to left and zoom. I mean, like, like I can't, I can't show you here. Maybe here. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, this this card is if if there's a vampire deck, you're probably gonna play this anyway because it, it can help you get the city's blessing. Uh, it can give you Vampire's Vigilance. Like, if it's needed, if you have a tribal deck, which is interesting because the only tribe in white is Vampires. Uh, you can't, you're not going to play this in Merfolk. You're not going to play this in Pirates. You might, I guess you could play it in Dinosaurs. But, um, yeah, if you if you need a card like this in your white deck, if you if you want to play Vampire Anthem God, Vampire Lord on turn two, Radiant Destiny on turn three, and give all your Vampires plus two, plus two, that's cool. You can do it. Um... Otherwise, this card is not exciting, but it is sometimes necessary. So, oh, there is white cats too. That's pretty cool. Raptor companion. Another. This is just literally the the, the card straight straight out of Ixalan. Um, three one for two mana. Dinosaur. Meh. Okay. Sanguine Glorifier. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, so already we're not playing this card. Enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on another vampire you control. This is great and limited. I would love to put a 1-1 a one, one counter on my 2-2 two, two for make it a 3-3. Three, three, uh, and still get a 3-3 three, three out of it. That's fine. I'll play like probably two of these in my limited deck if I get them. But um, yeah, I mean it's fine. Like limited only of course. So Sky Marcher Aspirant. One... For a 2-1 with a Ascend. Let me just check something real quick. And it has flying as long as you have the City's Blessing. So, 
Um, this is actually pretty good, I think. As far as one drops go, like this is a two one for one, which is uh, about about standard. And if you just end up with the city's blessing, like if you're playing an aggressive zombie or an aggressive vampire deck, and you get ten permanents, five five lands, five dudes, all of a sudden your two ones have flying. And even if they even if they don't, it's still a vampire, a two one vampire for one mana. This card's great. So yeah, I could uh, see this being a, a pain in both constructed and limited. Slaughter the Strong. Three mana. Each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls with total power four or less. Then sacrifices all creatures he controls. So so the way this is worded, you choose any number of creatures with total power. So if I have a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, and another 1-1, one, one, I can keep those three. Or if I have a 4-4, four, four, I can keep that. And then you sacrifice the rest. Is that how that works? If so, that's pretty interesting. Um, if your opponent has four one ones, I can still they can still get to keep all of them, which is kind of annoying. If you have a four four, you get to keep that. I don't know. This is a weird card. Like cards like this are weird. There's always these kind of uh circumstantial wrath cards, wrath of God cards, um, that don't like. I mean, you, I mean, you think someone said I think this card can dethrone energy. I'm pretty sure there's going to be uh something coming down the pipe as as far as energy goes on Monday. In terms of ban and restricted announcement, I also think that uh, if you're looking to kill all the cards in energy, you can probably do it with like a fumigate. Because uh, if you're trying to kill like bristling hydras and glory bringers as well, like you might as well just fumigate, right? Because you're you're gonna wait till four or five anyway to, to kill them, so you might as well just kill kill them all with a fumigate, right? There's no reason to to use this where they still get to keep one bristling hydra, or one glory bringer, or a world of virtuoso and two tokens um, when they can. You can just fumigate them all and gain life. So that seems... I don't know. There's always these um, these kind of circumstantial Wrath of God cards that... You, you kind of want to do a thing. You want to kill all the creatures and you want to reset the board. And these don't really do that all the time. So, I don't know. Like, it, this seems like kind of iffy, like... Especially if you don't have any... Like, you're going to play this in a deck where you have creatures. Otherwise, you would just fumigate, right? Like, so you're going to have some guys on the board presumably four or less power and uh you know then you want to come out on top but i don't know if that's going to always be how it goes like if they have a if you if you have like a two two and a two two and they have a glory bringer they keep their glory bringer and you just now you have two two twos and i, I don't know if i'm wasting my time playing a slaughter of the strong and um still my opponent can come out ahead i don't know um, I'm I'm on the fence about this. I also like settle the wreckage more than this. I'd rather give them lands, but get rid of their attacking creatures. So, Snubhorn Sentry, one white. O three ascend. Snubhorn Sentry gets plus three plus zero as long as you have the city's blessing. Not a fan of a dinosaur that doesn't do anything until I have ten permanents. At that point, ideally, I will have a better card uh, than something like an O three. It becomes a 3-3, but I don't want to have an 0-3 in my deck up until the point where I have 10 permanents. I maybe you even play this, maybe you play this in limited. I don't know. Um, it depends on the how aggressive the format is, but I think this dude's a cutie. He's a little cutie, but might be too little. Sphinx's decree is it's interesting. Two mana sorcery. Each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. This is interesting if it was an instant. So on your turn, I could play Sphinx's Decree. And then on during, uh, you can't cast spells on instant or sorcery during the next turn. So on my turn, you can't cast them. That would be cool because it prevents you from countering my things or stopping my combo or whatever. But the way this is worded, like I, I play it on my turn. During the opponent's next turn... They can't play instants or sorceries. Okay. But it's your turn, so you're likely just going to play permanence. I mean, someone mentions approach, and it's like, yeah, that's fine, but then they can just play it on the next turn, right? Like, you don't have to cast approach. I, like, I can be like, approach? Okay, go. My turn again? All right, now I'll cast my approach. And I don't think that's... Like, this card just doesn't do much. And I think it's worse than a card like Silence. Uh, for obvious reasons, I think it's worse than like Orem's Chant. It's just a really bad version of this card, of what this card does. And 
I think it's really narrow. Like, there's so many times where your opponent's going to be like, I, I, I wasn't going to play Sorceries and Instants on my turn anyway. Sorry. And you're always going to play Sorceries on your turn, but, like, I guess it's okay in the Vampire deck if you want to be like, hey, no Fumigate on your turn. But then they just go to your turn again. It becomes back to you, and you're like, attack with all my guys since they lived and you didn't Fumigate. And then they're like, settle the wreckage, and you're like, okay, you got me. Dang it. I can't, I can't, I guess I did nothing. Like, yeah, this card should definitely draw a card. If this card drew a card, I think you actually have a playable card. Like, what was the other card? Hollow Moonlight? Wasn't that the card that almost, it did nothing, but it lets you draw a card? Let's find out. Yep, it lets you draw a card. Now, that's, I think that's the distinction. Like, when you have a card like this, that's specifically used as a, 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 a kind, of, kind of sideboard card, I feel like drawing a card is... Uh, just the necessary quality of that. Like a, a necessary component to making that uh, uh, work or make it better. Squire's Devotion. Like, it's funny that... Yeah, it's funny you could say it's an anti-combo card, but like... um, If they're playing... Like, if, if the combo's like Splinter Twin Kiki Jiki, you're just like... Oh, you just do it anyway, because neither of those are... Sorceries or Instants. Okay. You got me. I don't know. This card's way too narrow. <laughs> like, preventing sorceries in instance. It doesn't really draw a card. It does nothing. So, I, I don't like it at all. I didn't like it the first time I saw it. And I was just like, ooh, gross. Yeah, and when it says each opponent, uh, it's kind of like a red flag to be like, oh, this is just a commander card. So then it's like, you can't cast instants and sorcerers during your turn, you can't during your turn, you can't during your turn, and you can't during your turn. And you're like, all right, so I, I negated four people's instants and sorcery ability uh, for the next for their next turn, which is a lot more powerful than one person. Um, so maybe it's just a commander card. Who knows? Three mana enchantment. Uh, creature gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. So it's basically like a small Mark of the Vampire. Instead of plus two, plus two, it's plus one, plus one. And when it enters the battlefield, create a one, one white create vampire with lifelink. So this is actually great. This card's fantastic. Um, you get one less power and toughness, but you also get a one, one out of it. So you're basically breaking even on power and toughness. And it costs three, and it keeps you in white, which is the vampire color now. So um, I, I like this card a lot. It's also, you can... You can put it on the 3-3 three, three now. You can go turn 2, 3-3 three, three vampire. Turn 4, turn, or turn 2, 3-3 three, three vampire. Turn turn 3 this guy. Make it a 4-4. Four, four, make a 1-1 one, one along with it. And then just attack for 4 and untap your vampire. Perfect. Yeah, this is this is gas. This is gasoline that I would play in, in Constructed. Sun Sentinel. 2, 1, and a white for a 2-2 two, two Vigilance. Okay. Sun Crested Pterodon. Five mana for a 2 5 flyer. It has vigilance as long as you control another dinosaur. It's actually fine. I mean, it's limited, it's limited only, but it's fine. I mean, I'd play a 2 5 ground guy for five if it had vigilance, and uh, a vigilant flyer that's 2 5 is pretty good. Uh, I think Hunter's Dreaming, you can see his little legs moving now. But uh, yeah, again, limited only, I think. I don't, I don't think you're going to play paying 2 5s for five and, and constructed. Uh, Temple Altisar. Five mana for a, a 35. A vast games. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. You are awesome. Uh, if, if a source would deal damage to you, to another dinosaur you control, prevent all but one of that damage. I mean, that's powerful. Three, four for five is not a great rate, but um, it does minimize a lot of damage based removal. If a source, so if they play like if they play Star of Extinction, and I have three dinosaurs out in this guy, a source deal damage to another dinosaur you control. Prevent so it deals one damage to all my dinosaurs, ends up killing this guy. So this guy ends up like sacrificing himself for the team, right? So I think this this could be relevant in the dinosaur deck if there's a constructed dinosaur deck playing a couple of these. It does mean you have this is like a, this is one of those creatures where it's like you have to get rid of this guy in order to get rid of the other dinosaurs. Um, it's also a source would deal damage. So it does, it does include combat damage as well. So if you have this guy on board and limited, you're, it's, you, that's just bust. This is a busted limited card if you're playing dinosaurs, uh, and they don't have a removal spell for your three, four. So, um, 
yeah, that's pretty that's pretty insane. Um, I'm not sure if, if a 5-mana 3-4 is going to make the jump to Constructed, but the ability is powerful. The ability is strong, especially against damage-based removal. Trapjaw Tyrant. This is a mythic. For 5-mana, we get a 5-5, five, five, which is yeah, a, little, a little below the curve for our power and toughness preferences. And it has Rage whenever it is dealt damage. Exile a creature an opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. This is also like, this is a very common trope as well. Um, there was also Admonition Angel, if you guys remember that. She was from World Wake. She cost six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. So here we have five mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Admonition Angel is six, six, for a six, six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. And it had Landfall. So it's the same ability. Uh, it's the it's the set mechanic landfall versus the set mechanic in rage. Admonition Angel says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may exile a non-land permanent other than Admonition Angel. And then when it leaves the battlefield, return all exiled cards into the battlefield. So both of these this is basically just Admonition Angel 2.0. This is this is Rivals of Ixalan edition. Five five for five instead of a six six for six. The set's relevant trope, which is a dinosaur. Uh, it, it uses the, the sense mechanic in Rage versus the sense mechanic Landfall. And, you know, I mean, is it good? I don't know. Like, I don't like having to consistently shoot our dinosaur. I think something like Ripjaw Raptor is just, just is better than this. There's not a ton of ways. I mean, you might be, like, I feel like you're going to be forced to, to play these mediocre ways to deal yourself damage, like to deal your the creature's damage, like the, um, the one that like dual, like dual shot, I think it's called, like where it deals one one and one. Um, but like, do you really want to go to all that trouble and then they just kill it and get their guy back? I don't know. Five five for five is that even big enough? I don't know. I don't know. Only time will tell. This card's interesting. It's a strong ability, but I mean, look at Admonition Angel. Admonition Angel saw no play and she had flying. You know. Just being able to um, to exile a creature under, you know, with the with the stipulation that they, you know, if they come back if this creature dies, is a little scary because it leads you to these blowouts where it's like, oh, I'll attack with my trap jaw tyrant and two other creatures, and you're like, kill your tyrant, get my two guys back, block your other guys, and it's just it puts you in this awkward position. So you know, not, I don't know. It's it's worth considering, but it definitely has there are some uh, some issues with it. You know what I mean? So, but oh, uh, as far as limited goes, you you win most slam this every day. This is a first pick. You first pick this in limited. So just to make this clear, you take this dude every single time. Zatalpa, Primal Dawn, otherwise known as Alakir. Uh, so there's a there's a Hearthstone called. Hearthstone card called Alakir. And uh, Al Alakir the Windlord, right? Oh, I, I I went I went back a few cards because I set up these I set up these these hotkeys as actual keys. So Alakir the Windlord is a 3-5 for 8 mana. This is a 4-8 for 8 mana, so almost double the, the toughness as there is power. Uh, this is a legendary creature. Alakir is a legendary legendary minion. Uh, Alakir has Wind Fury, which lets it attack twice. This has Double Strike. It has Charge, uh, which is Haste. This doesn't really have Charge, but it does have Flying. I guess that's similar. Uh, it has Divine Shield, which means it can be hit once. It doesn't doesn't deal. It, do, it doesn't take damage on its first hit, but then you break the shield, and then then everything else deals damage, which is kind of like indestructible. And it has Taunt, which means it uh, you have to attack it before you can attack anything else. Uh, which is kind of like Vigilance. So these are very similar cards. <laughs> They're both big legendary dinosaurs for eight mana that have like all the keywords. However, this is a cycle. This Elder Dinosaur, uh, this Elder di Dinosaur uh, creature type is a cycle. And I think this is probably one of the more boring ones. It's kind of cool to reanimate, but it doesn't have haste. Uh, it's indestructible, so it's hard to kill, but it, there's so many ways to kill indestructible creatures, including like just just things that you like slap on it like uh it, there's Ixalan's binding and uh castaway in standard right now which are just two fantastic ways to deal with this guy right and like it has it has eight toughness but it might as well have four or five i mean there's no i don't know if there's what are the what are the scary negative x negative x effects in standard right now grasp of darkness just rotated but that's a common one dismember is a common one as well if we're talking about reanimate re reanimating this in an older format 
Uh, one of the things that people have been mentioning with this card is Soul Flare. And as someone who used to play Soul Flare and Chromanticore in Standard, uh, I love that idea. I think this is awesome. Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible, Soul Flare. But, I mean, then again, you're in, uh, you're in Modern, so you can just have this Dismembered, which is unfortunate. Or you can have a Path to Exile, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, I mean, if you're playing 8 mana, in, just having Indestructible on your creature is often not good enough. And, um, I don't know. This is one of the more, it's one of the more boring ones. It's literally just a straightforward, it's, it's basically a vanilla creature with a bunch of keywords on it, right? It doesn't do anything super, super broken. It's not, uh, super, it's not interesting. I'm not like, ooh, there's a lot of interesting choices, or this is a super interesting mechanic, or I'm really intrigued by this. You know, it's just, it's just like, all right, it's a big dumb dude. Maybe I'll reanimate it. I don't know. But, uh. Either way, those are the white cards. And uh, yeah, be sure to check out the future videos of the blue, green, red, black, gold artifact, etc. And uh, be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you guys next time.